I have never been a fan of broccoli, in large part because it's hard to cook properly. Either the florets are overdone and mushy or the stalks are fibrous and tough. But today, Dan is not only gonna show me a new method, but he promised to show me how to add some flavor. That's right. So I was in the same camp as you for a long time. I thought broccoli was always overcooked and not that great. Then I had roasted broccoli for the first mm -hmm. time and I was total convert. <laughs> so today we're going to make a skillet roasted broccoli, which is even easier. You don't have to turn your oven on and you get that same beautiful browning, crisp, tender results on the inside. All right. Now when we're looking for browning on anything, we need a nice flat surface because that flat surface is going to make good contact with either a skillet or a roasting pan in the oven and get beautiful browning. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have a lot of flat sides It surely it, does right? not. So we have to make some nice flat sides. For smaller crowns like this that are up to four inches, we're gonna cut them into four pieces. And if you have bigger ones that are kind of four to five inches, you wanna go into six wedges. Okay. So what I like to do is first make my cut here to split this and pull it. You get less kind of debris ah. and broccoli flying all over the place. That's a good trick. Yeah. So we'll just pull that and we get there. Now I have five tablespoons of oil in a 12 inch nonstick skillet okay. here. And that is really a key to any time you are roasting is having enough oil to make great contact with the bottom. So this technique of starting in a cold pan, yeah. we, we tend to call it cold searing now. It's something that we do all the time with proteins and with vegetables. What's really nice about it, obviously this is cold, very easy to arrange everything in here. And I can add a couple tablespoons of water Aha. without a big steamy mess mm -hmm. and splattering and all of that. And that water is really important. It's going to help create a lot of steam in there and help tenderize the broccoli in this first step. I also have three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt here. So I'm just going to season these up. Great. So we're going to put the top on here and I'm going to put this over high heat. We want to create lots of steam there. We're going to jumpstart that browning and get a lot of steam from that water. And the stage here takes about four minutes. Okay. So now we're going to do a topping. So I mentioned that we're going to get really great broccoli, but then also a flavorful topping for it. Uh, we're actually going to make a really nice dry topping. Ooh, so you got the mortar and pestle out. Mortar and pestle. You could also use a spice grinder for this. Uh -huh. I love the mortar and pestle. I always have it on the counter. It's just such a great thing to work with here. So we have two tablespoons of sunflower seeds that have been toasted. I've got a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Nooch. Nooch. So is it is something that you use a lot in your kitchen? I have it. I yeah. put it on popcorn because it makes popcorn taste incredible. It's incredible stuff. It's cheesy and umami and it's so it's deactivated yeast. You cannot leaven your mm -hmm. bread with this and it adds a ton of savoriness and it's dry. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. So a half teaspoon of grated lemon zest mm -hmm. for some really nice brightness and then a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika and finally just a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. All right. So I'm going to get my mortar in here and I like to first go pretty gently. So around. things don't fly out. Exactly. Work my way around break some of those sunflower seeds into smaller pieces. All right, so now that it's broken down, I can kind of run my pestle around this way, get it to a nice, even consistency. So this is our topping. We're gonna to take a third of this mixture and put it on the bottom here so that every piece is totally coated. I like it. So we'll set this aside, and now we've got about a minute left on the broccoli here. Okay. Dan, it smells like broccoli. Yes. Oh, you're not happy about that. <laughs> smells like steamed broccoli. So it has been steaming. There's also a little bit of browning. It's been about four minutes. So we're gonna take the lid off. And at this point, as you can see, some of it's shrunk down. Yep. So I can get those pieces that weren't touching to touch. So just use my spatula here and press them in. Okay, great. Everything is flush to the surface as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put the lid back on and continue to cook. We're gonna get great browning on that bottom side and keep steaming it through a little bit. It takes about four to six minutes. Okay. All right, so it's been about five minutes. We're gonna take a look here. And I think we've got beautiful browning Ooh. on that side. So I'm gonna take this off the heat at this point, slide it up here, and this makes it really easy to just turn them all. So we want that second cut side. Remember, we made wedges. We want mm -hmm. that second cut side to get really good browning as well. So just shifting that over. All right, so I'm going to put this back on the heat and we're going to get the second side gorgeous and crispy just like the first. Uh, this takes about three to five minutes. Covered or uncovered? I'm going to uncover it now. We've got plenty of steaming, so plenty of tenderizing. And from time to time, I'll just use my spatula to make sure I'm getting really good contact. Okay. And that is good looking broccoli. That is good looking broccoli. Right? All right, so we have got gorgeous browning on both sides. I was just checking. You see that? Ooh. Okay. Beautiful, right? I'm in. I'm in so far. You're in so far? All yeah. Right. All right, now we're going to transfer it over to our topping covered platter. Well, and the way you're arranging it on the platter with the topping, I mean, it just looks cool. Right. You know, it's, it's elevating this lowly brassica a little bit. And then we will sprinkle it on. That color is beautiful too, isn't it? That looks pretty cool. 
oh, I can now smell the sunflower seeds and that lemon zest hitting the hot broccoli. And you get that smoked paprika too? Yeah. All right, let's get you some really nice pieces. Mm-hmm, I appreciate you picking out the good ones. Lots of flavor on there. Well, I must say it's the prettiest looking broccoli I've ever seen. All right, Dan, the true test. It's pretty darn good. Mm. I'm gonna try it again. Mm. It's the topping. I'd put that on anything. It's good, right? We actually have some other toppings as well. You can find those at our website. I mean, that cooking method's amazing yep. because the florets are perfectly cooked. They're not mushy, but there's not they're not fibrous, and the stem. Mm-hmm. Nice and tender, like crisp tender. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Dan, I can honestly say this is the best broccoli I've ever eaten. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you want to make what is, in my opinion, the best broccoli, cut broccoli crowns into wedges, start it in a cold pan with oil and a splash of water, and serve with an aromatic topping. From America's Test Kitchen, a great new method for skillet roasted broccoli. You can find this recipe and all the recipes and product reviews from the season, along with select episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash TV. I'm going back for a third bite. Yes. It's unheard of. Unheard of with broccoli. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.